While reviewing the cities that are considered the financial capitals, the financial hubs of the world, especially London, New York City, now Hong Kong, Singapore, these great hubs, bastions of business, among others, I was struck by this notion amidst my infatuation with these great cities. In times past, I've thought, I just need to do whatever I can in order to get to that city, to get to this place, to be in this country, and then that will allow me to become or grow into the person that I'm trying to be when it comes to my career. I just need to get to this place. And so what I want to discuss is doing things in the proper order. Here's what I mean. Let's say you're studying international business, or that was your degree, and the first thing you do once you finish school is you move to another country, and you think, because I'm going to this other country and I have this degree, I'm going to succeed in business on an international level. Not just business in another country, but business involving international agreements, trade, logistics, politics, international business in that sense. You think if I go to this place, well then I'm going to be successful in, or I'm going to quickly become this kind of person who is in the world of international business. But that's not what actually happens. You go to a new country, or you go to a new city, and you work from the ground up in the world of business, just as you would in the city that you came from. You think, I want to be a part of these greater things. The way to do that is not by jumping ship, going to another country. The way to do that in this example is becoming incredible in an aspect of business wherever you happen to be. You become excellent, and as you grow in your career, you will get to the point where if international business, relationships, trade, policy, mergers and acquisitions, if that's what you were interested in, as you grow and progress, you're going to get to a point where you are skilled enough, reliable enough, seen as an expert, as a leader, to the point where you will be the person that people look to for such roles. You don't just go to another place and it happens. Here's another example. When I first started privately studying a foreign language, I had my books, I had my tutor, and I thought, what's going to make me stand out in the world of software engineering or taking that software engineering and relating it with finance along the lines of quantitative risk, if I learn a foreign language, I'm going to be a more attractive candidate for these roles looking forward into the future as being the stepping stools towards a role in which I'm going to really be able to utilize that foreign language because I'm going to be in a place where I'm working internationally. I didn't step into the hiring manager's shoes and think, they're hiring me for a job today, and that has nothing to do with the foreign language. It has to do with software or quantitative analysis or whatever job they're hiring me for, which is not some leadership role. They're hiring me for my core competency, not for this extra skill. It may show supplementally that I'm a particular kind of worker, that I have a particular kind of drive, but that doesn't demonstrate that I'm able to get the job done that they would be hiring me for at that level in the first place. I look at CEOs, business leaders, people who are at the peak of their career or rapidly growing in it and see the breadth of their experience. I see the wide range of people and industries and countries that they interact with. I look at that in awe. It seems incredible. And I've gotten into my head that the way that I get there is I need to take whatever it is that they have supplemental to their core competency and bolt that on to me. And then if I take me and have all of these supplements bolted on, then I'll be able to do what they're doing, or I'll be selected, or I'll be a more suitable candidate to do what they're doing, or a lower level version of what they're doing. But I do that while ignoring their core competency. I'm looking at what's supplemental, the things that stand out that are especially interesting or have more headlines but not focusing on that core skill or core set of skills that they have that I lack. What's needed of me right now is to be excellent at what I do, to cultivate that core competency. And if I want it to be something else besides software engineering, then I need to pick that and pursue that. If I show myself to be reliable, excellent, a leader in that core competency, 
then I will be reached out to, picked up by other people in my company or in other companies to learn whatever supplemental thing I need to learn to do a job so long as I have that core skill, so long as I'm known for that core aspect or attribute. You may have heard of these intensive few week or month long intensives on learning a foreign language. Sometimes, or perhaps oftentimes, in high level negotiations, when it comes to mergers and acquisitions, negotiating trade deals, companies will take their employees, the highest people in the company who are going to be responsible for brokering these deals, and will have intensives before the negotiations take place to equip them rapidly with the supplemental skills that they need. They've already grown in their understanding of the business, the industry that they're in. They've already had plenty of time to refine their ability to negotiate. And if there's anything supplemental that's necessary, experts are brought in. Thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars are spent in intensive sessions to get this supplemental knowledge brought to the people that are going to be involved. Think of those categories, core and supplement. Do you confuse those two? Do you confuse the foundational elements of skills and knowledge that you need to grow in with supplemental things? It's a way of confusing a relatively good thing, you might say, or a relatively interesting activity with the right thing or the best thing, or the most effective thing. I could say learning a foreign language or learning multiple foreign languages is helping me to become more fill in the blank. You might say something like me being a part of this country club or this yacht club or this association or having a leadership role in this nonprofit organization or volunteering it's helping me grow in this way. It's developing my skills in this way. But is that actually what you need to be growing in right now? Is that what's most lacking in your skill set? If you're anything like me, it's easier to focus on the supplementals than it is to focus on the core. It's easier to convince yourself that you're doing the right thing by spending all of this time on supplements. In a way, it's avoiding the harder thing of concentrating on that core. You could consider the bodybuilder or the gym rat who focuses only on upper body but always neglects their core. And I'm not just talking about abs. I'm talking about lower back, core, obliques, abs, glutes, quads, everything related to a foundation the parts of you that actually are related to you moving from taking steps. It's like somebody bulking up their upper body and not being able to actually go anywhere because they haven't worked on their legs, their core, that foundation. Sometimes it's not as interesting or is not as appealing. But know this, if this thing that you're supplementing is really so important for you in your career or in whatever you're pursuing, and if it's not part of the core, that core competency, no amount of supplementing will allow you to get to that place you envision yourself going. However, if you focus on that core competency, whatever skill it is that you're working on developing most of all that's related to your work or your planned future work, if you're focused on that, then any supplements you need along the way, either the company you're working with or the people around you or the situations you come across will call for and will be or provide the opportunities for you to add on those supplements as needed along the way. It becomes purely as needed. Let's take a small example. You may have media content that you're trying to produce or market. Take this podcast for example. I have all sorts of ideas of how I could spread it out more. Articles according to the audio episode, videos corresponding to the audio, translators for 
the articles, translators for the audio, Q&A sessions to go alongside every episode, multiple social media platforms to post to, and to interact with people who comment. All these ideas. One, that's going to lead to me spending a lot of money without knowing how effective it would be. Two, it's spending a lot of time focusing on creating things without actually developing the content of what I'm putting out, without actually going back to this first thing, this core thing, that is me creating a podcast and enhancing that content. That's the foundation of it all. If that's not being enhanced and growing, no amount of supplements is going to make that better. Instead, I have a core path that I'm initially pursuing. Audio, a corresponding article, and posting to select media channels. If this gains traction, and as I develop the content itself, as I learn more, then I'm going to find out along the way what is called for next, whether that is translations, Q&A sessions, or things that I haven't considered yet, things that may be suggested to me along the way that I don't know now and I wouldn't know unless I go through this step by step steadily. It's a simple example, but it can serve to give you a picture of what I'm talking about here. Focus on the core, build that up, build that up sturdy and strong. As you do that, what you need to do following that, any supplements along the way, you will be able to add on, but you can't do it the other way around. Don't confuse those two. Discern, recognize what your foundation is and what is nothing more than an adornment. Mm -hmm.